Empowered CD series. Um, you are one of the first people I thought of when we first started this project because you are such an amazing um, leader, female leader, but not the, just that, but you're like working towards empowering other women. So that's why I'm so excited to have you here today. So um, let's here. just um, get started. So my first question to you is for those that don't already know you, could you tell us a little bit more about you, who you are, what you do, um, so we can get started. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anna, for the invitation. And of course, it's my pleasure to, to be in this interview, uh, prepare for, for such amazing women. Uh, first, I would say that I'm a curious person. I have always been an outsider and always like trying to challenge status quo of everywhere in all the jobs I've had. So that's why I reached the stage in which I created my, my own company. And that's where I am now. And can you tell us more about your company and what you do? Of course. It's uh, the first uh, online business school for female leaders with top demand programs uh, focused on reskilling uh, women careers in be it in digital decision making in leadership in sustainability in data mm, science in all kind of, of, of things that are uh, strongly related to the required skills and the required jobs that are growing in demand and that, that's what we do and so how did you um, decide to start this business and focus specifically on women. I'm like super curious about that. I've been to major business school, not only in Europe, uh, in Spain, but elsewhere. Uh, and I always found out that women were seldom 20 or 30% in the room. So that's why I thought that maybe we could mm, bring some challenge and some some solution that from the beginning was designed for women to be in the room uh talking about like the the delivery of the content itself also about the content and examples that we are referring to in the contents of the of the sessions but also in terms of or work overload, right? Uh, because we are all really busy women. And the first thing that comes to our mind when we think about progressing and studying is like, I don't have time for that. So that's that was our main and absolute uh, thing to, 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 to overcome, our main barrier. And we are, I think we've been successful with this. Yes, I agree. So um, I was part of one of your cohorts. And I think for me, one of the biggest wins was, yes, the flexibility that comes with the program, but also the community of women that you create when you join um, one of your programs. So can you talk a little bit more about like how you decided all so that you create this community? Yeah, well, as I said, it was like, I think it was a need, an uncovered need, and that I would, like, it was very aligned with my life purpose of bring, like, a more uh, equal and and diverse uh, community and generation of female leaders because business are requiring that, but BCG and McKinsey and all big consultants are talking uh, about, like, how the fact of bringing more women to the room and to the decision making and to the C-suit uh, brings you uh, more profitability, but not only talking in terms of, of money, but also like in terms of engagement, of talent and, and like of, of success uh, in general, it's, it's much more um, advisable to have like diversity in, in each of the, of the company. So, so that's why uh I, I decided that that I had to do something for that. Uh, and the community started growing fast because when you start first, I selected like the teachers, then the students, then uh, the students that joined for with people from other cohorts and international cohorts, uh, European cohorts, and from different uh, backgrounds and different uh, courses that, that they've been at. And it's it's a, a real pleasure. I mean, it's, it's difficult to, to start, but then it, it grows fast. Yes, yes. Um, all right. So the next question for you is if you um, 
would be talking to someone who's just getting started in the workforce, maybe just graduated or is thinking about going into college um, and wants to be like you in the future in their career, what would you tell them like as a piece of advice or um, to encourage them to move forward? What would you tell someone who's getting started? I would probably say um, be very careful with the benchmarks that you pick as people because uh, I had usually picked as benchmarks or or examples or or reference or mm, like people who were my my bosses uh, and I found out that of course same as I have and I commit many mistakes they did as well so whenever I wanted to inspire and to see how I could grow maybe I was envisioning like people we, we didn't have any info accessible like now we have plenty of podcasts plenty of people that, that we can follow don't we but at that time it was not so uh, do not because that would that would put a, a, a ceiling uh, to your career and a, a constraint so Make sure that you choose the right uh, the right advisors, the right sponsors, the right mentors, the, the people that, that can guide your way. And uh, of course, the, the growth will always be on you, but still uh, choose the right reference. That is such a great point. Uh, and I think too, you know, for me personally, growing up, um, it was hard to find female leaders as examples. So, you know, being able to imagine yourself as a leader, especially as a as a woman in um, a third world country, it was hard to figure it out. So, how would you help women who are maybe in that situation to living in 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 um, countries where there aren't that many leaders or females aren't as encouraged to grow in their careers? How can they overcome that or find those other women to that? can inspire them? I would tell them that technology is in our side. I mean, as long as we, you have a connection nowadays, it's no longer a problem the place you are based in. Otherwise, I could never go on holidays in remote places uh, or holidays or not holidays, but work remotely. I mean, as soon as you have an internet connection, it doesn't matter where you are because you can join communities, you can join uh, podcasts, you can join... Uh, mm, webinars, uh, com I don't know, any kind of activities that there are available. There are so, so, so many that are built for last. So that's what I would say. I mean, it doesn't matter where you're based. Uh, of course, it would be nice, like if you could also take part in, in, in physical events, that's for sure. But the fact that you are, I, I work with really people who are living absolutely lost, like in places that are really remote and they do their living and they, with, with that. I mean, it's, it's not a problem. Yes, I agree. Technology has um, allowed us to connect with so many women. And I think the other thing that maybe I think of, it's just like reach out because sometimes you feel like the person who you admire won't even like accept your invitation on LinkedIn or like reach out, but just even daring to ask is such a great um, yeah. step. Absolutely. Have you experienced that, like where you were maybe scared to reaching out to someone and then you build a connection? I still am, I have to say. I'm very <laughs> cautious. But, but yeah, but I will, I, the fact that I am still am is not that I push myself not to do it. No, I always like look for the right and the best way to introduce myself to someone if it's on LinkedIn or in a, in a meeting or, or in a networking event. So I'm just like, not, not, not like trying to, I want to sell you something. No, but maybe of course I read about you. I know that you're here. We are connected. We have this person in common. That's why like networking is an art, as you know. <laughs> yes, yes, it's not easy. But I think like what you said, like being authentic and finding those points of connections and being transparent about your what you're looking to get from that relationship is super important. All right. And so um, my last question for you is, what do you think that it's like your superhero strength and why? Probably I have to say that it's not what I think, but what really like 100% of the people who are around me tell about me. 
<laughs> so I'm going to speak in their words and say that I'm like, I have a terrific ability to do many, many things at the same time. Do not, do not mm, misunderstand that I lose focus because I do not. That's the fact, no? I I, I am able to keep focus and, and bring a lot of projects at the same time and lead different teams in everywhere and have many things. I am also like uh, an acting mom, as I like to say, because I, of course, I am a mom, but uh, my children, we don't have any help at home for children. I am proud mom and I like to deal with their lives, not have a nanny that it's taking care of their lives also, which is very demanding, highly demanding. But uh, in my opinion, it gives me super strengths as well, no? Superhero. Yes. So Being that's why- mom I is already a superhero job. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good. Clara, thank you so much again for your time today. I'm like so excited to share more of your story um, and what you do with our women localization community. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Anna. <laughs>